View transitions are magic. And in literally under two minutes, we're going to get our site from looking like this to looking like this using Astro View Transitions. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, here's the site we're going to be working with. And this is the Astro blog site that I built out on my channel a little bit ago. And if you want to follow along with the code, you can come to the link in the description, just download the zip and then open it up in your favorite code editor. Here we've got it in VS Code. So I can just do npm install that will install all the dependencies. Then once that's done, you can do npm run dev. That's assuming you have node on your machine. So that should get you up and running and you should be looking just like this. I did mention that this is something I built out on my channel and I've since updated it a little bit, but you can find uh, that code right here if you want to follow along with that tutorial. I've also updated it to use content collections and then I did a video recently on Astro Assets, which I'm also using in this project. Now, generally speaking, we only need three steps to make this magic work, which is unbelievable, but you can follow along if you come into this view transitions experimental inside the Astro Docs. And again, I'll leave a link to this in the description, but we need to just do three things. Let's go ahead and start with this first one, which is simply adding the view transitions experimental equal to true. So I can open up my Astro config and all I have to do is do view transitions and set this to true. Now you only need to do this before 3.0 because at that point, this will then just be part of the stable release of Astro. So that's step one already done. The second thing we need to do is include this view transitions component somewhere in our code. Now, generally speaking, if you're going to do it for your whole site, which is what I'm going to do, you might have like a common head component. And I happen to have that. So a main head right here. And all I'm going to do is then take this and say import view transitions. And that will just auto complete that automatically. Then I just have to add this component somewhere in my head. And like that, we've done step two. So by default, now that we've done that, everything will just start to crossfade. So if I click in here, you can see how it just crossfades back and forth. If I go to a different page, it crossfades over there. So the entire site is crossfading. And all I've done is do those two things. Now, what it's doing behind the scenes is it's saying, here's your old page you were just on. You clicked on this new page. I'm not sure how to link these things up. So I'm just going to crossfade between everything because there may or may not be shared components. It doesn't know that. So what we're going to do next is actually kind of what I'm representing with these colors, which is give it distinct names for each of these sections so it knows exactly which things to move throughout the DOM, which is really quick and easy to do. So all I'm going to do is come back over here. You can see that you can give these things names, view transition name. Now behind the scenes, all this does is add a view transitions name CSS property to individual elements in your DOM. So I'm going to come over here and let's just go and do that with the index page. So if I come over here, let's look at these blog posts. Those happen to be in something called post card. And what I'm going to do is come down here to this image. And just to make it a little bit easier on you, you can just add a transition colon name and just give it a name. And again, all they're doing behind the scenes is essentially setting the style to this view transition uh, name, whatever you happen to name the thing. Now, one thing to note is you have to provide it a common string, like a straight string. So you can't have spaces like this. And uh, you could have it like a bob case like this. So we could use a slug, for instance. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap this and just make it dynamic. So we'll say something like image. And then I've got a URL being passed into this card component right here, which will be slugified by default since it's a URL. So I'm just going to use that as my transition name. So I've added it from here and now I need to go to the next page, the new page and give the new page a name. So let's say this is my image. I've just added the name here. I need to now add this to my new page. Now, all of those blog pages used something called a post header. Again, this is just the way I happen to have built out the site. So I can come in here and do the exact same thing. Transition name equals image URL. And because I'm getting the URL in right here, that same thing should work. So now with those two little changes, I can come back over here and look at this magic. I just click and it moves immediately into space back and forth between the two. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? So now nothing else is moving. So for instance, uh, if I come in here, I would want like the title to also probably move along with that. And it's not doing that. So we could do the exact same thing with the title really easily. So let's come up top here. I've got the title and I can just do view transitions name. Instead of calling this image URL, I'll just call this title URL. And then let's grab the same exact thing and let's come back to the postcard and let's find our title that happens to be in this tag component. And just like this, now, if I come in here and I click, not only is the image going to fade, but also this title is going to fade up into a spot as well. <laughs> so pretty amazing. And I can continue this. So obviously I can come into this small tag and say something like meta URL, and this will fade all this stuff. And again, I just need to grab this, come back over here find that same small tag or, or anything I want it to fade between. In this case, it happens to be a paragraph tag, but I'm just telling it, hey, it's the same exact thing. If I move back here, now they all kind of fade up and down, 
just like that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And one more time, just to kind of belabor the point, let's add this as a category for the category. And I come back to the postcard and let's find our category up top here, right here. And I'll just add it to this whole thing right here. Now, as I switch between these, the category switches, the image switches, the title and this about little meta section all kind of fade and move into view. So that's as easy as it is. You don't have to do almost anything else besides that. Now, this is basically working in Chrome browsers by default. Everybody else will just get the standard like page refresh. They have tried to implement some fallbacks for those browsers. So if I come back over here, here's Safari right here. And if I click here, it should kind of have some fallback. I'm not getting that experience, so I might be doing something wrong, but that's why this is just a first look. And as they get this closer to stable release, I'm sure if there are any bugs or if I'm missing something, then we will fix that between the two of us. So all we've done is basically give it individual names and say, hey, this should fade to this, this should move to this, this should move to this. And they don't even have to be the same component. You could have it move and actually be something completely different, but that's that's kind of the point is that it is the same component. So just to show you, that's what we're doing here. Now, there are other details here, like maintaining state across those different items. You can also give like, for instance, like this persistence between things. So maybe I should just show you this real briefly. So let's grab this right here. And this transition persist will basically even allow you to have like a video that plays on a different page that stays in the exact same spot as when you started it. So let's come over here to post header. And I'll just, I'm just going to add it to the top of both of these items right here. So if I come back over here, I now get videos playing. So now the only other thing I need to do is give this some kind of unique name. So let's call this something like video URL, video URL, and it needs to be unique on each page. So the reason I'm doing it like this is because the home page has obviously tons of different videos since they're all kind of the same. So let's come back over here and add the same thing here, video URL, make sure that is saved as well. And now if I come here, notice where these people are, they're right at kind of that corner. If I click inside here, they're still at that corner. So the video actually stays consistent with where it's at. If I move back, once again, that's where they're at here. If I come down here though, it's just started the video for this one. So it's keeping track of all these video states separately with this transition persist. Now, once they release the 3.0, I'll do an updated video where I actually talk through how this is working using the View Transitions API. This is just coming to all browsers, which is really cool. You don't have to do it on page refresh. You can actually do it on individual sections of a page. So as stuff moves around, you can actually stay on that same route and just move things around using that View Transitions API. But I just want to do a quick preview of how to get this started. And there are a couple of got you's that, again, I'll get to in the full video once we get around to that. I hope this was a help, though. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.